Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu. And today on the Fit15, I will not be joined by an awesome guest, but I do have some great guests planned for you in the coming weeks. So if you are not a subscriber yet, be sure to subscribe to the Fit15 wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a review. That really helps other people find the show. And yeah, I guess I should just dive into today's episode since... I'm going to be the only one speaking and I want to make sure you get as much value from the episode and as little rambling as possible. Okay, so today's episode is going to be a what's for dinner Wednesday themed episode, which is kind of a throwback to a series I used to do every week on my blog. So I will link to that series in the show notes and you can find recipes that I still love that I found by encouraging myself and challenging myself really to find a new healthy recipe to try every week to help my blog readers incorporate more whole fruits and vegetables into their lives. So that's one resource you can check out. But this is the audio version of What's for Dinner Wednesday, so I'm going to add in some other ideas for you and not just one dinner idea. First, I'll talk about a few websites that I love. The first one is one called yumly.com. It's Y U-M-M-L-Y dot com. I love this site because it helps you search for recipes by several different qualities, ingredients, tastes, diets, allergies, nutrition, techniques, cuisines, and time. So I really love personally using the ingredients option and the time option because I, like many people, don't have much time to spend in the kitchen. The reason I love the ingredients option is probably pretty obvious, but basically you can look up ingredients that maybe you have lying around and you're not sure how you can make them into a meal, or maybe you go to the farmer's market and you want to use those fresh seasonal items that you found, but you're not sure how to make them into a meal, or maybe you belong to a CSA, a Community Supported Agriculture Group, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up CSAs near you. I was a member of one when I lived in Massachusetts, and it really helped me to find and enjoy really great fruits and vegetables, some of which I didn't even know of before, while supporting my local farmer. So recommend that. It's really great for families, too. You get to be a part of the farm, usually, when you're a CSA member. So I could go on and on about that, but maybe you're a CSA member and you have a bunch of new, intriguing fruit and vegetable items and you're not sure what to do with them, Yumly can help you out because you can search by ingredients. The other reason why I love Yumly is something I learned from one of my Drop Two Sizes Challenge participants last year. It actually links up with Instacart. So I haven't been using Instacart. I have to be honest, I am very spoiled and my husband actually likes stopping at the grocery store for me, which is a rarity, I know. But If you need to get your groceries and you don't enjoy stopping at the grocery store, you can sync your Yumly recipes to your Instacart and have your ingredients delivered within an hour is what they share. So great way for you to avoid those impulse buys at the grocery store and staying on track and getting to actually enjoy those recipes that you have saved. So Lots of great reasons to use yumly.com. I hope at least one of those sounds intriguing to you and that you'll check it out and love it as much as my clients and I have been loving it. All right, so yumly.com is a good website. Another website I really love is cleaneatingmag.com. It is the website for Clean Eating Magazine, which is one of the first magazines I used that got me excited about healthy recipe ideas. They have a great catalog of recipes on the website so if you're like me and aren't really into subscribing to magazines anymore trying to declutter a little bit you can still enjoy their recipes and well I know there are lots of different definitions for clean eating and I don't encourage you to feel like you have to eat clean whatever that may mean to 
any person at any time. The recipes do have great ingredients and usually they're veggie focused and fruit and veggie focused. So I recommend trying them out. And I often would find that my husband and other men in my life who tend to be the pickier eaters, right? I mean, that's just the truth, would love the recipes that I'd find on there. So definitely check out Clean Eating Mag. It's a great resource and one of my favorite ones that really got me started with eating healthy and finding recipes that I could actually cook as someone who doesn't have very many, if at all, any cooking skills. So I recommend that website as well. All right, moving on from websites, I'll share some cookbooks that I love. One that I love but haven't used recently is called Skinny Taste. The Skinny Taste cookbook is really great. Again, that's been a favorite because the men in my life have enjoyed the recipes from there, even though they're healthy. So I will link to some blog post I've done on the Skinny Taste Cookbook. Highly recommend that one. I've also been enjoying several cookbooks more recently. So I did talk about this cookbook on Monday's episode, but I'll give it a shout out again. This one is Run Fast, Eat Slow, written by Shalane Flanagan, who is a marathoner and winner of the New York City Marathon, and Elise Kopecki, her co-author, great recipe ideas in them. I have not tried them all. The dinner one I've tried over and over again has been the salmon burgers. They are absolutely delicious. They have salmon and sweet potato as a focus. You're going to love them. Pretty sure if you like sweet potatoes and salmon. And that's a great thing to make and put over a salad if you want to get in some more vegetables as well. So highly recommend that recipe. I know we're trying to stick to dinner ideas here, but I also love the can't beat me smoothie in there. I know I say not to go to smoothies if you can and try to just eat your fruits and vegetables whole, but if you are looking for a smoothie recipe that is going to be a healthy option and something you can grab, I really recommend that, and I crave it a lot as a runner. So if you're a runner, you might enjoy that. Again, obviously, if you can get your whole fruits and vegetables as a salad or through another way, do that first, but if you're trying to run out the door and you're you're having some trouble there, recommend that beet smoothie even for people like me that aren't huge beet lovers. It's been a great recipe. All right, we are at the halfway point of today's episode. If you're joining us in only have 15 minutes and you're on that walk, 15 minute walk that I recommend you do while you're tuning into the episode, you wanna make sure you turn around now. All right, back to healthy cookbooks. So definitely love Run Fast, Eat Slow. The other cookbook that I have been loving is the Kiefer Cookbook by Julie Smolianski. I got to enjoy several recipes from her cookbook without even having to cook them. Pretty great, right? Because Julie was in town in the LA area promoting her book when it came out a few months back and they had amazing samples of some of the drinks in there, some of the salads. One of my favorite things from the evening was a Brussels sprout focused salad that had a dressing that was kefir based. So if you don't know what kefir is, kefir is a cultured yogurt that's really high in probiotics. I've been enjoying the Lifeway Foods brand and their kefir products for several years, but I had no idea you could cook with and make so many great recipes with the product until I read the kefir cookbook. So highly recommend trying that out. If you can add kefir into your meals, you're going to get some great probiotics in there. So it's a great option. If you're able to have your kefir around in your fridge long enough to use in a recipe versus just enjoying it regularly. So really enjoy that cookbook for the recipes, but also for the inspiration. There's some great stories in there that Julie has included in the cookbook in between the recipes and You'll get to learn more about her journey as a CEO of Lifeway Foods and her backstory. And it's a really great book that will be an amazing gift for a mom as well. All right, the third and final cookbook that I've been loving recently, although I haven't been able to get off this one page that I really love and I haven't been able to get the beet recipe made in my kitchen because I keep using my beets for Shalane's beet smoothie, which is crazy to me because I mentioned I'm not really a big beet lover in general. But the book I love is Eating from the Ground Up. It is all about recipes for simple, perfect vegetables. And it's written by Alana, I hope I'm saying her name right, Shernilla. I'll link everything in the show notes here. I really hope I'm saying her name right. But really, really love this book. It has over a 100 
versatile recipes that are going to help you showcase the unique flavor and texture of each vegetable. So if you are like me and you often struggle to use vegetables in your cooking or you don't know how to use various parts of your vegetable that you might just end up throwing out, you're going to love this cookbook. The recipe that I am obsessed with recently is a great example of that because it uses a part of the plant that is its main ingredient in a way that I never use before and often, if I'm being honest, would just throw out, which is not good because I don't have a compost pile right now. So these great vegetable parts were getting wasted, but the recipe that I've been loving is one for scallion crepes. So you actually use both the white part of the scallion, which many of us usually do, and also the greens, which is something that I personally was not doing a good job of in the past. It's a really simple recipe. You have your scallions, an egg, some milk. I should go back to the recipe and remind myself of what else is in there, but it's a very simple one. And then you can just whip up these scallion crepes and they're delicious. And you're going to get some vegetables in, use up part of the vegetables that you might not have used otherwise. And I have been using them actually sometimes even with my salmon burgers as a option for a bun when I don't have a bun around or don't feel like having a hamburger bun. I feel like I don't mind hamburger buns, but I'm a huge bread lover and if I'm going to have some bread, I want to have bread that's seriously delicious versus just random stale or almost stale seeming bread, right? So highly recommend that book. I'm really looking forward to enjoying looking into more of the recipes and learning how to implement all the parts of some of my favorite vegetables into my cooking and not waste as much and get inspired by some of those seasonal veggies. All right, we know Mother's Day is coming up, so I'll mention two more books that I haven't been using a lot personally, but I have gifted to clients, and they are Dr. Nicole Avina's books, What to Eat When You're Pregnant and What to Feed Your Baby and Toddler. The second book I mentioned, What to Feed Your Baby and Toddler, just came out yesterday. I got my copy in the mail because I pre-ordered it, so I'm really excited to dive into that and to use it to help my mom clients who have babies and toddlers. The book, What to Eat When You're Pregnant, I've had for a while, ever since it came out. I think it was three years ago now, which is crazy to me. And that one is a great book because it's a trimester by trimester guide to what to eat when you're pregnant to help your own health and baby's health and development and support that. So check that out if you or a mom you know and love is expecting. You'll get some great recipe ideas that will help you include foods that you should be eating and that will help support your baby's health and Avoid feeling overwhelmed during a pregnancy and feeling like there is nothing that you can eat. So highly recommend that book for an expecting mom for Mother's Day. And then obviously also recommend Dr. Nicole Avina's most recent book, What to Feed Your Baby and Toddler. Feeding baby and toddlers can be very challenging and stressful sometimes. And Dr. Avina was on the podcast to share her tips and insights. So if you have some time and you want to listen to those two episodes definitely check those out in the show notes and then grab her book to help yourself or a mom you know who's struggling to figure out what to feed her baby and or toddler and need some inspiration there around dinner time or any time. Speaking of Dr. Nicole Avina, today is the last day you can enter to win a copy of her two most recent books that I mentioned, What to Eat When You're Pregnant and How to Feed Your Baby and Toddler. So do not miss out on that. I know you're going to love the books or a friend of yours will love them. And this is going to take me to the end of today's episode. So I'd love to hear what you thought. I'd love to hear any cookbooks or recipe ideas that you're loving. And like I said, I have lots of great recipe ideas for what's for dinner Wednesday from my older blog series. I used to keep going there for a few years. I hope you'll enjoy those. And I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow if you are a subscriber to the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.